Naval warfare has evolved significantly over the past century, with advancements in technology and engineering leading to the creation of some of the most advanced warships in history. From nuclear-powered submarines to stealth destroyers, these ships are designed to operate in the most challenging environments and to project power across the globe. So join me for today's video. I'm going to count down the top 15 most advanced Navy warships in the world. Let's begin. Number 15. The Sea Hunter while the Sea Hunter may be one of the newest additions to the U.S. Navy, it has the potential to make an immediate impact in military operations. It was first launched in 2016. It's an unmanned surface vehicle that can operate with very little human guidance. At the moment, a human captain is always on hand in an on-land control room, just in case things get sticky. However, the onboard AI has become so advanced that this may soon become unnecessary. In fact, tests have shown that the Sea Hunter can patrol without human interference, and it can use its optical cameras and radar to avoid hitting obstacles and other boats. At the moment, the Sea Hunters are unarmed. The current plan is for them to play a supporting role by monitoring enemy fleets, clearing mines, and providing a secure communications relay for larger warships. Interestingly, there are rumors that a weapons package is in the works, which could allow the Sea Hunter to act as a fully autonomous killer. However, if this were to happen, there is a certain chance of problems if the AI malfunctions or otherwise becomes too difficult to control. Number 14. The Yes and M Class While Russia isn't all that well known for its navy, one of its few ships that are really top of the line is the Yes and M Class of submarines. They were first launched in 2017, and there are currently two out of a planned eight that are currently in action. And when it comes to power, they have very few equals in terms of firepower. That's because these 131-meter-long submarines can deploy 40-caliber cruise missiles strapped with thermonuclear warheads. If those weren't bad enough, the sub's 3M22 Zircon hypersonic missiles are arguably even more disruptive than their nuclear counterparts. That's because they're scramjet-powered hypersonic cruise missiles that can not only be maneuvered in flight, but can also reach speeds of up to Mach 9, which for reference is nine times the speed of sound. So they're virtually impossible to shoot down, making them a real threat. Worst of all, since the SNM class is powered by a 43,000 horsepower nuclear fission pressurized water reactor, it has the ability to reach any corner of the globe. This means it can shoot missiles at nearly any target on Earth, making these subs highly dangerous. Number 13. The Arleigh Burke Class For the past 30-odd years, the Arleigh Burke Class has been a staple of the American arsenal. With a total of 70 completed and 13 being built, it's the bread and butter of U.S. naval operations, as it's these ships that can be found in waterways around the globe. Now, in terms of capabilities, they are a Swiss Army knife of sorts. After all, through the last few decades, they've carried out escort missions, deterrence patrols, anti-piracy missions, ballistic missile defense duties, land attacks, anti-air operations, and even humanitarian and disaster relief missions. This is possible thanks to the fact that they have a top-of-the-line Aegis combat system, powerful radars, and are subject to continuous upgrades. This is complemented by their incredible firepower, armed with 56 Raytheon Tomahawk cruise missiles that consist of land attack, anti-ship, surface-to-air, and anti-ballistic missiles, among others. They are well-equipped. While their armament of seven guns allows the ships of the Arleigh Burke class to dish out a lot of damage. Best of all, because the Zumwalt class of destroyers will no longer enter full production, the Arleigh Burke class will continue to serve and continue to be given upgrades, thus maintaining its status as a world-class fighting vessel. Number 12. The Nimitz Class All right, when it comes to aircraft carriers, the Nimitz Class is America's bread and butter. It's first commissioned in 1968, the Nimitz has gone on through a total of three subclasses and consists of 10 separate carriers. They're able to carry up to 36 Super Hornets, 12 Hornets, 6 Growlers for electronic warfare, 6 Hawkeyes for airborne early warning protection, Greyhounds for logistics, and a squadron of 6 anti-submarine helicopters. They are nearly impossible to match in open combat. And while having such a large number of aircraft on board may sound kind of crazy, this is all possible because these aircraft carriers are the approximate size of four professional soccer fields stacked back to back. While their displacement of about 105,000 tons means they're roughly the weight as much as 21,000 elephants, yet beyond carrying aircraft, these vessels are well known for being completely decked out with weapons too. In fact, at any one time, they have up to 24 NATO Sea Sparrow missiles and four RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles on board allowing them to quickly neutralize any incoming threats. And in order to make sure everything runs well, the ship's activities are all facilitated by a crew of over 6,000, while their two Westinghouse A4W nuclear reactors and four steam turbines allows the Nimitz carriers to reach all corners of the globe. 
Number 11, the DDG-X. When it comes to surface combatants, the U.S. Navy may soon be behind the times. After all, its most recent rendition of this type of ship is the Arleigh Burke class, and given that it launched more than 30 years ago, without the right upgrades, it's in danger of becoming out of date. Thus, the DDG-X is designed to be its replacement. While still in the design stages, the idea is that the DDG-X will fire hypersonic missiles and lasers that are up to 10 times more powerful than the U.S. Navy's existing laser weapons. These will be operated with the help of a 32-cell vertical launch system, and the hope is that the DDG-X will be able to travel 50% farther and spend 120% more time out on missions than more conventional vessels. Interestingly, while the plan is for the DDG-X to share some of the features of the new USS Sumwalt, it will generally lean towards the design of a conventional battleship, as it will have a massive body and swept angular bulbous bow design rather than the wave-piercing sharp angles of the Zumwalt. In terms of a timeline, the hope is for construction to begin in 2028, for it to be active soon after, and for it to serve the U.S. Navy well into the 2060s. Number 10. The Zuhayun while it's usually the United States that makes military firsts, it's China's Zuhayun that takes the cake for being the world's first totally autonomous AI-powered drone carrier. According to state-sponsored media, it's able to carry up to 50 unmanned aircraft, surface vessels, and submersibles on its deck, and could potentially operate automatically or, if necessary, by remote control as a mothership, launching swarm after swarm of drones. Now, claims have been made that the drones will be strictly used for marine research. After all, the lab that made the ship had the express goal of creating a ship that could survey an underwater and above-water area 50 nautical miles in diameter. However, it's not much of a stretch to conclude that the drones of the Zuhayun could serve as a massive surveillance system or potential attack force. Yet, as much as we may speculate, I guess only time will tell. Number 9. The Fujian until recently, China owned just two aircraft carriers in comparison to the United States' 11. However, after years of development, they now have a third one that will be roughly comparable to the U.S. Navy's world-leading Gerald Ford class. It's known as the Fujian. The development of the carrier first began with the help of imported Russian technology, and after all the bells and whistles were installed, it was launched on June 17th of 2022. In terms of features, the aircraft carrier is pretty impressive, weighing in at somewhere between 77 and 90,000 tons. It has a catapult launching system, which appears to hold three separate deck catapults, with each being able to shoot out multiple types of aircraft depending on the mission at hand. This is possible via a system known as integrated electric propulsion, which is powered by the help of massive gasoline or diesel-run engines. As such, the Fujian certainly has a lot of firepower. However, I should note that the Fujian has been a subject of a lot of controversy. This is because the Fujian is the province directly opposite from Taiwan, and given the growing tensions in that region, the symbolism of its name has not gone unnoticed. And unfortunately, if China does decide to attack Taiwan, the Fujian would almost certainly be part of the Chinese arsenal. Number 8. The Shandong the Chinese Navy has really been getting its act together in recent years, and one of the most important poster children of this ascendancy has been the Shandong. As the country's second aircraft carrier, it's a point of pride for the Middle Kingdom, as it stands apart for being the country's first domestically built aircraft carrier. While this is an accomplishment in and of itself, one of the more worrying things about the Shandong is that it's one of the best aircraft carriers in the world in terms of military capabilities. Coming in at a length of 305 meters and having a weight of about 60,000 tons, the Shandong is quite large, and this allows it to carry a total of 36 aircraft, including 24 fighter jets and 12 helicopters. These aircraft are accompanied by three gun towers and three 18-cell missile systems in order to ward off any threats, while its top-of-the-line radar allows it to quickly locate anything coming its way. Now, it should come as little surprise that most of the details surrounding the Shandong are under wraps, as the Chinese Navy isn't exactly known for being all that open about its military capabilities. However, given the rising tensions in the South China Sea, it can be assumed that if a major conflict were to erupt, then the Shandong would play a key role. Number 7. The Saladrone while most drones are tiny little machines that fly through the skies, the Salad Drone is their aquatic cousin. In terms of size, Salad Drones are slightly longer than a pickup truck and a tad taller than a commercial truck, in other words, far larger than most drones. However, they more or less have the same function. You see, unlike almost every other Navy vessel, Salad Drones make use of wind to navigate and solar panels to power its onboard computers and sensors, all of which are controlled by AI. This allows them to operate without any crew, and they can be equipped with multiple payloads for different missions. 
Now, while none of these payloads have any weapons, they all have different acoustic packages that include different combinations of single beam or multi beam sonar, an echo sounder, and an acoustic Doppler current profiler. It's with this equipment that the Sala drone can complete its ultimate task long range data collection. And when I say long range, I really mean it. After all, it can operate for up to 12 months at a time without maintenance or refueling. If that wasn't cool enough, they are a sustainable zero carbon solution that can work without too much oversight, making them a reconnaissance machine of the future. However, it's worth noting that to date, a few have gotten into enemy hands. That's because in September of 2022, Iran captured two salad drones, which became quite the scandal. And while they were promptly returned, it can be assumed that some of the Salad Drone's tech secrets have been compromised. Number 6. The Gerald Ford Class U.S. naval supremacy relies on the country's abundance of aircraft carriers, and to date, the Gerald Ford Class is simply unmatched. First rolled out in 2017, at the moment just one is currently active, while another one is completed and two more are under construction. Costing approximately $14 billion a pop, these carriers certainly aren't cheap. However, their firepower helps justify that price. You see, these carriers outcompete the older Nimitz class in many ways, so much so that the Gerald Ford class is often considered to be the best aircraft carrier on the planet. In terms of activity, the Gerald Ford class can conduct 160 sorties per day instead of just 140, has the ability to produce about 150% more electrical power, and can interoperate very well with other Navy, Army, and Air Force vessels. It also has a very high weight and stability allowance to accommodate for the added weight of new systems that will be installed over the ship's 50-year operational life, making it flexible in terms of upcoming new technologies. While many of these technologies are still in progress, for the time being, these carriers can hold up to 90 aircraft and make use of weapons such as Raytheon Evolve Sea Sparrow missiles and a close-in weapons system. If that wasn't cool enough, despite being larger than the Nimitz, the Gerald Ford class has far more automated technology, allowing it to use 500 to 900 less crew members and reduce maintenance costs by about 30%. As such, the Gerald Ford class of aircraft carriers are nothing short of incredible. Number 5. The Type 055 Destroyer While the Type 055 Destroyer is shrouded in a cloud of secrecy, it's easily one of the Chinese Navy's most advanced new ships. Appearing to be a cross between a stealthy Zumwalt-class destroyer and a powerful Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, many experts contend that it may be a step above both ships. First entering service in late 2020, its design has a Zumwalt-like stealthy configuration, as it has a smooth, straight hull configuration with few protruding structures such as guns on the side, deck masts, or antennas. However, it also has no less than 128 concentrated vertical launch systems to launch missiles from, with these including anti-ship cruise missiles, short-range surface-to-air missiles, and long-range surface-to-air missiles. If things get really hairy, the Type 55 destroyer can launch up to three Harbin Z-9 and Changxi Z-18 helicopters, giving it a lot of versatility no matter what the situation. Yet despite all this heft, it can reach the average speed of about 18 knots and a standard range of about 9,300 kilometers, making it a very capable fighter. However, despite all these features, there are still a lot of question marks surrounding it. After all, despite it being stealthy, it has vertical protruding structures that make it easier to detect than the Zumwalt, putting it at a slight disadvantage. It's also unclear whether or not the Type 055 has radar-like ballistic missile defense technology like fire control, air and cruise missile defense, all of which would put it a step above many of its competitors. Yet what is clear is that no matter what the situation, the Type 055 is a force to be reckoned with. Number 4. The Virginia-class Block 5 Submarine Submarines are often overlooked, but I'd say that the Virginia-class submarine is arguably the most powerful vessel in the U.S. Navy's arsenal. It was first launched in 2003. The Virginia class is both super strong and super high tech. It's powered by a S9G nuclear reactor that produces 280,000 horsepower and a further two steam engines that produce a total of 80,000 horsepower. The submarine is quick, going at speeds of up to 46 kilometers per hour while being efficient enough to reach every corner of the globe. Beyond its power, its tech is what sets it apart. One of its most notable features is its unified modular mast. Replacing the normal assortment of several masts, it unifies the sub's sensory and detection tools. This allows it to more easily gather info, navigate water bodies, communicate with home base, and intercept enemy communications and radar. These abilities are enhanced by its variety of sonar arrays too, which when working together allow the Virginia class to hear enemy ships that are up to 4,800 kilometers away. 
Virginia-class subs also have an advanced pump jet propulsor. This is a techie upgrade over traditional blade propellers because it can reduce the risk of cavitation and is significantly quieter, therefore reducing the chance of problems while out on the high seas. This is not to mention the Virginia-class's overpowered global strike missiles, which allow these subs to hit targets practically anywhere on the planet and launch their attacks at speeds that are up to 20 times the speed of sound. When you further consider that the Virginia class also comes equipped with a plethora of torpedoes and missiles and that there are even plans to mount nuclear-powered lasers onto it, it becomes clear that the Virginia class Block 5 may just be the U.S. Navy's most impressive military asset. Number 3. The Sejong the Great Class When it comes to military, South Korea is routinely overlooked. A country that's been consistently threatened by both North Korea and China is always got to be at the ready, and in order to protect its territorial integrity, it's in possession of a class of destroyers that's arguably a step above anything owned by the United States. It's known as the Sejong the Great class. There are currently three in active service, and they stand apart for quite a few reasons. First and foremost, at about 10,000 tons, they're the world's heaviest destroyer, and due to their comprehensive sensor and weapons suite, they're able to perform practically any mission out there. More specifically, they have long-range anti-ship and land attack missiles that are launched out of three vertical launch systems, a close-in weapon system, a rolling airframe missile launcher, a 127mm naval gun, Red Shark anti-submarine rockets, and Blue Shark torpedoes. It's this combination that makes these ships very versatile and able to engage in conventional naval warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and anti-air warfare operations. If all this wasn't cool enough, the Sejong the Great class even comes equipped with two Westland Lynx MK-99 helicopters, a high-tech radar system, and an Aegis combat system developed by Lockheed Martin, all of which help place it a step above its competitors. In fact, the Sejong the Great class is so incredibly effective that it can attack land targets that are up to 1,500 kilometers away, with some observers and experts believing that a single Sejong the Great warship has enough firepower to obliterate all of North Korea's surface and subsurface fleet and ground targets, no matter where these ships and targets are located within North Korea's territory. As such, given that a total of three of these ships are active and a further four completed, yeah, it's fair to say that South Korea is very well defended. Number 2. The Independence Class On the surface, the Independence Class may look a bit strange. Having a square-shaped open back and super pointy front, their form is far different than most other battleships. However, their firepower more than makes up for their strange looks. Now, the Independence is known as a littoral combat ship, in other words, a type of relatively small surface vessel designed to operate near shore and be a flexible, affordable addition to the U.S. arsenal. In order to be so flexible, these ships have some interesting features. First and foremost, their unique hull makes them fast, stable, and agile, allowing for a large rear deck that doesn't significantly increase its radar signature. It also has several useful weapons on board, with these including a 57mm gun that can hit targets up to 14 kilometers away, a C-RAM close-in weapon system for air defense, and an ANWLD-1 remote mine hunting system to keep the ship from getting blown to bits. When you further consider that it features two 30mm cannons that fire 200 rounds a minute at a range of up to 2 kilometers, it's easy to see how this ship is ready for anything. Yet, despite all its cool features, the Independence class has had some serious design flaws. While not all the details are publicly available, it's been reported that a high-stress area of the ship has routinely become cracked, with a total of six out of the Navy's 13 active warships experiencing this problem. To make matters worse, serious questions have been raised as to whether or not the ships are actually all that useful, as their ability to be used in missions and defend against cyber attacks is not entirely hashed out. Therefore, while these ships have a lot of firepower and the potential to be great, the U.S. Navy is going to have to put a lot of work into them to ensure that they can be part of their long-term plan. Number 1. The USS Sumwalt the U.S. Navy is always looking for ways to improve itself, and the USS Sumwalt was supposed to be the ship to launch the force into the future. Considered to be the largest and most technologically advanced surface combatant in the world, it's designed to fight naval warfare entirely above the surface of the water. Coming in at 183 meters in length and weighing about 15,000 tons, it's a massive ship, although it doesn't stop it from being stealthy. You see, its design compensates for its size due to the fact that it consists of futuristic, sharp angles that turn its radar cross-section to the approximate size of a small fishing boat. In terms of speed, its wave-piercing tumble-home hull allows it to easily pierce through the water, while its two Rolls-Royce gas turbines drive a set of Curtis Wright electric generators that make the ship both powerful and fuel-efficient. 
In terms of its armaments, it's a jack of all trades, as it's got different weaponry for different situations. For example, for more long range targets, it makes use of 80 advanced vertical launch cells to launch standard Tomahawk and Sea Sparrow missiles. And if necessary, it will make use of two 155mm advanced gun systems. For shorter range targets, it makes use of two Mark 46 close in guns. And if things really get hairy, it can deploy its five helicopters to neutralize pesky adversaries. Now, while this all should make the Zumwalt an incredible ship, the reality is that it might be a somewhat useless high-tech trinket. That's because while the Zumwalt was designed to assist in land attacks, exactly how this could work logistically was never properly ironed out. To make matters worse, its capabilities are simply better suited for other types of ships. This puts it in a bit of a conundrum, as while it is a solid ship, for each of its tasks there's an existing specialized ship that does it better. Therefore, while the Zumwalt may be cool, it may never reach its full potential. I'll see you all next time. We're excited to announce that the Top 5 Show has launched channel memberships. By clicking the Join button, you can become an official member and sponsor of our channel. As a channel member, you'll gain access to exclusive perks and members-only features, such as members-only videos and custom chat icons. Becoming a channel member not only adds to the fun of being part of our community, but it's also a great way to support the channel. For the cost of a cup of coffee, you can help our team create even more amazing content. Check out the new Join button below and consider joining the Top 5's membership program. Thank you to our channel members.